and I suppose on the subject of voting, I suppose I'll start away. Who do you think is going to win, really, in the next I election? Think, I don't think I've ever been in a general election campaign that was more difficult to call. Yeah. Because there are so many different factors, mm. so many different parties, and, and what's mo much more, in, in, in some ways, to the point, is that there's such a level of, of certainly disillusionment with yeah. politics and contempt for the process of politics, and I would say, I fear, a lack of understanding about why politics matters as opposed to something else. Yeah. I mean, I, can't, I saw a, a bit of a programme yesterday evening that Ed Miliband was on. Yeah. Um, and somebody uh, uh, who I think, I can't remember if they were in the run-up to the programme, but anyway, he said, um, no, no, I'm not going to vote because I think there are other ways to change things. And I thought... Well, yes, yeah. if, you, if you were born to wealth and power, there are definitely other ways to change things. But if you're not, I don't know of any other. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. Um, for five years, I was the um, Secretary of State for the Environment. And I was our climate change negotiator. And part of that period, I was the European Union's climate change negotiator. And the NGOs did a tremendous job, you know, great people, lots of them very bright, very experienced, very well informed. Um, and often they, they were very helpful. We tried to work with them and to be constructive, and they were often very helpful at the conferences. But in the end, there was a room, and in that room were politicians. And that's where the decisions yeah. were made. And the NGOs weren't even in the room, never mind at the table. Uh, and that's why I'm afraid, of course there are lots of other ways to campaign. There are lots of other ways to try and change things, and I'm not knocking any of them. But it comes down in the end to the politicians. Yeah. Quite a big issue now, and quite a common thing coming up, is the rise of UKIP by their influence. How do you feel about that? Nervous. I mean, um, UKIP are a very right-wing party. It's quite a strange mix in some ways. But Nigel Farage says his heroine is Margaret Thatcher. Um, he uh, has tried several times to be a Tory candidate. Um, most of his backers are former Tories. Uh, and many of, of his potential candidates um, and supporters and members come from the Conservative Party. Um, he's probably to the right of many, not all, of the existing Tory party. Um, so it's basically another voice coming from the right. And he has, I mean, he has a very engaging manner, um, there's no doubt about that. But a, a man of the people, he is not. Um, and, you know, it always worries me if I think people are being conned, if... If, uh, if, 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 what you're, if what you're saying if it is genuine and it's well thought through, um, but I mean, he seems to change policy in half an hour. I mean, not last week, I think, they had this peculiar thing where their spokesman said it was their policy that there was going to be a cap on immigration of 50,000. And within sort of 24 hours, Nigel Farage was, was saying, no, there wasn't going to be a cap, but the numbers were going to be between 20 and 50,000. Now, he says quite correctly that David Cameron, when he promised that uh, pledge on bringing immigration down to 100,000, was talking nonsense. It's perfectly true. You couldn't possibly do that unless you leave the European Union. Um, uh, and I think it's pretty nonsensical to suggest you can bring it down to the numbers Nigel Farage is suggesting, even if you leave the European Union. But I'll tell you what, one of the things that really bothers me and why I say you've got to be honest. He seems to be saying, I've, I've never heard him say these two things together, but on the one hand, he talks about um, stopping free movement of labour to cut immigration. On the other hand, he says, of course we can leave the European Union. And of course they'll still want to trade with us because we do a lot of trade with them. It wouldn't be in their interest not to trade with us, blah, 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 blah. And he talks about, as, as other people do, uh, Norway, Switzerland. They're not members of the European Union, but the European Union trades with them. What he never says is that as a condition of trading with the European Union, Norway and Switzerland have to have free movement of labour with the European Union. You cannot trade with the European Union without having free movement of labour. So he may not, I've never heard him actually lie about it, but I've never heard him put those two things together and admit that if you don't have free movement of labour, you won't be able to trade with the European Union which for people who were, might be a bit concerned about the economic impact of our leaving the European Union, that could make a considerable difference. And I think that's just, just not fair and not honest. And apart from the fact that they would have to have free movement of labour, which means that his 50,000 is completely unrealistic, unless we're going to cut ourselves off 
from trading with the European Union, um, they have to be bound by the regulations that the European Union puts in place that affect issues like trade. They don't have any say in the negotiations, they're not in the room, they're not at the table, uh, but they have to agree to be bound by them because otherwise they can't trade with the EU. It seems to me to be a crazy position to put yourself in. So uh, I think he's, he's not honest with people. Um, I think he's quite a dangerous man, I'm afraid. What do you reckon his chances are in the election? Very hard to tell. Mm. I mean, I, I read the other day that he's very angry that people like Al Murray have decided to stand against him and various other people who, are, who, who would say themselves, I think, that they're sort of frivolous candidates. Which I think is a bit of a cheat, really, because a lot of people regarded Nigel Farage as a frivolous candidate when he first started standing. But anyway, um, he doesn't think they should be standing against him. Um, your guess is as good as mine. I think if we're able to get across facts, like the fact that you can't just trade with the EU and not have free movement of labour, then I think people will start to see through it. But the channels of communication are uh, somewhat silted up. You're, you're reliant on the news media. The news media love a good story. They love Nigel Farage. They will do everything they can to help him because he's good copy. Are there any parties you think might be a bit of a dark horse in the election? Might have a, you know, might do surprisingly well. I think it's very hard to, always to judge how the Greens will do. Yeah. Um, I mean, many of their uh, political ideas I sympathise with. I just think they ought to be in the Labour Party yeah. because that's likely to be the most... I mean, we are the people who delivered... The, the greatest degree of agreement um, on climate change. Um, and, uh, you know, they are only ever going to be, um, certainly under present circumstances, it seems likely anyway, only ever going to be a sort of marginal voice. And it's nice to have a marginal voice saying exactly what you want them to say, if that's the case. But what matters more, and that's, that's really the decision people have to make, would you rather have purity so that you feel that, well, that's just what I want somebody to say, and so that's where I'm going to place my vote. Of course, they won't win. And of course, they won't have any influence, but I'll feel pure about it. Now, you know, that's a perfectly legitimate and in many ways quite honourable point of view to have. It's never been my point of view. I came into politics to try to change things as I saw it for the better for people who need somebody to speak up for them because they're not very good at speaking up for themselves. And to me, the best deal you can get is always better than the pure high standard that says, I'm not going along with this because I really want that. And so we don't get anything. Never mind. Yeah. I mind. <laughs>